Hi everyone, the reasoning capabilities of AI have advanced in unexpected ways, dramatically altering complex realms like computer programming and the creative arts. Yet, tasks that seem much simpler to us humans have remained out of reach. Could there be a discernible pattern to these advancements? Keep watching to learn more. This video has three parts. The paradox of abstract thought, examining human cognition, and redefining general AI. Part one, the paradox of abstract thought. Let's start by talking about humans. We humans evolved from creatures that had to run and hide and hunt to survive in the ancient biosphere. And importantly, we've inherited a billion years of evolutionary baggage about the best way to survive in that biosphere. What makes humans unique and different from animals? I think the big factors are that we can use tools and that we have language. This has roots in the animal world, of course. The great apes have some amount of tool use and language capability for example, chimpanzees were found to have around 390 different vocalizations that they can use to communicate. But what evolution gave humans, which it didn't give to the other great apes, is bigger heads, which enabled us to have more neocortex inside our brains. This extra neocortex enabled exponential growth in tool use, in language, and then eventually in abstract thought. It may even be the root of consciousness as well. We're not sure. So this is why we traditionally think of abstract thought as the pinnacle of biological evolution because it seems so important and so useful and yet it doesn't seem to have evolved in any creatures other than humans. Since it might be the hardest skill to master, it makes a lot of sense to define intelligence in that way. Next, let's talk a bit about AI. AI has been slowly increasing in capabilities, tackling more and more difficult problems, and we expected that the hardest things for AI to do would be those that are most difficult for us, including abstract thought, creative tasks like art, tasks that require difficult reasoning like computer programming. However, current large language models can perform impressive feats of reasoning and can be extremely creative in terms of the writing and the artwork, etc. that they can produce. And paradoxically, manual tasks, especially those that require some amount of dexterity, actually seem to be the safest from automation at the moment. The advice actually flipped, right? Prior to LLMs, people said that the more intellectual your job, the safer it would be from automation, whereas all those plumbers out there might be in a bit of trouble. Then LLMs start writing computer programs and we're like, oh, actually, the tasks that require a lot of intelligence, maybe AI is really good at those. And so far, no one's made a robotic plumber yet. This is actually known as Moravec's paradox. Moravec wrote, encoded in the large, highly evolved sensory and motor portions of the human brain is a billion years of experience about the nature of the world and how to survive in it. We are all prodigious Olympians in perceptual and motor areas, so good that we make the difficult look easy. Abstract thought, though, is a new trick, perhaps less than 100 thousand years old. We have not yet mastered it. It is not all that intrinsically difficult. It just seems so when we do it. So this is the paradox. Something that a human finds difficult because it requires a lot of abstract thought, a lot of intelligence, can actually be quite straightforward to implement in an automated system. However, our perceptual abilities like object recognition and our fine motor control are amazingly good. And this actually makes sense because those skills have undergone a lot more natural selection. Basically, since the first amphibian could walk and the first trilobite could see. And this is exactly what's happened. We've seen large language models become really good at language and many types of reasoning, while robotics, at least to the level of human standard, has proven to be challenging. Part two, examining human cognition. As you might have gathered by now, human cognition is not nearly as good as it could be. We're using version one of a brand new CPU architecture. Anyone who used a first gen Ryzen processor or Tensor processor might know what I'm talking about. And yes, my Ryzen 1800 did suffer from the segfault bug and I had to RMA it. In this section, I'm going to talk a lot about information from a Frontiers article, which I highly recommend you check out. It's chock full of very interesting details. I'll leave it as the first link in the description below. What I learned from reading it is that a lot of the biases that human brains are prone to are actually inherent in the neural structure of the brain. Things like confirmation bias, recency bias, and selection bias all have a root in our neurology. There are other indicators that human reasoning is not very mature. For example, the amount of information that we can process process in our working memory, in other words, the information in our attention span that we're consciously aware of, is only about 10 to 50 bits per second. That's a tiny, tiny fraction of the amount of information that's coming into our eyes all the time. Also, most cognitive tasks like reading text or performing calculations require our full attention, and it takes time to actually do them. Some people say they're good at multitasking, but trying to do multiple cognitively complicated tasks at once is asking for trouble. Have you tried thinking about what to say to your friend 
at the same time as trying to read a book, at the same time as trying to remember that you have something in the oven. And of course, when it comes to arithmetic calculations, for example, you can create a machine to do them much, much faster than humans can. And this is a bit weird because our brains are highly parallel. We can process a lot of information at once. We just can't consciously focus on multiple things at once. Even that word focus has the notion of a single task kind of embedded in it. Why can't we do multiple things at once? It's not something that we really question about our universe. Additionally, cognitive knowledge and skills, or rather the memory that holds them, actually degrades really quickly over time. This means that even when we try to learn something, we might forget large portions of it quickly. For example, I'm sure my Japanese teacher feels like she is giving the exact same lesson as the previous week if I haven't studied in the interim. Of course, we understand pretty well how this aspect of memory works, which is why, for example, in language learning, you try to use spaced repetition to constantly bring a word to your attention to try to recall it right as you're about to forget it. Thanks to evolutionary pressures, our brains are pretty good at remembering things that come up repeatedly because they might be important for survival. And they're also very good at remembering when you were experiencing strong emotion, especially strong negative emotions. Because when you get chased by a tiger, you want to remember how you escaped so that you can do it the next time. But this is also pretty strange, right? If we try to remember something, why can't we actually remember it? We don't actually have conscious control over the lifetime of memory, which again is something that you take for granted. But we do have conscious control over a lot of other things. So imagine if we had conscious control over that as well. In contrast to all these drawbacks with conscious processing of information, we are really, really good at unconscious information processing. Again, because that comes from a much longer evolutionary heritage. If you've read Malcolm Gladwell's books, you may have heard of System 1 and System 2, where System 1 is the instinctual automatic processing of your brain, and System 2 is the calm, deliberate, conscious thought that might go on afterwards. What's very interesting to me, and I think this is the most powerful part about conscious processing, is that if you focus on something for long enough, if you have enough repetition and enough failure states to learn from, you can actually move a task from System 2 into System 1. You're basically rewiring your brain enough so that there's now a hard-coded neural network designed to solve that problem. Anyone who's become an expert at a task so that it just becomes part of motor memory or automatic will know exactly what that's like. You don't have to consciously focus on something anymore. And system one is so fast. If you've ever seen an esports expert play a video game, for example, it's simply astonishing. Their eye sees and their hand moves fully instinctual. There's no conscious processing needed really. So system two, our conscious processing is pretty slow, is pretty limited in terms of not being able to multitask and all the other things we mentioned, but it's still very powerful because it kind of directs how you would like your brain to evolve in the future. And that's what we call learning. And it's still powerful because it's conscious. You can intentionally keep yourself awake, prevent yourself from sleeping, for example, even though sleep is pretty important for survival. And I think that's one of the keys to why humans can be so successful, because we do have that system one and system two to tackle different sorts of tasks. So Moravec's paradox basically boils down to if we see an AI do something that we would need system two to do, something that requires a lot of conscious thought, then we're amazed because it takes us a long time and a lot of effort and the AI seems to be able to do it instantly. On the other hand, when we see an AI unable to do something that we would use system one to do, like catch a ball that's flying through the air or something, then we think, oh, come on, AI isn't really that smart after all. Part three, redefining general AI. As we mentioned, when we see AI do something that humans find difficult, that seems amazing. But when we see AI not doing something that humans find easy, that doesn't make AI look good. That one article that I mentioned, again, has something to say about this. Although we talk about intelligence as the ability to autonomously and efficiently achieve complex goals, in practice, it's just constantly adjust and restricted to those things that only humans can do. I think this is why some people are reluctant to say that a machine is intelligent, because they're unconscious definition of intelligence is just that which humans can do and other creatures cannot. So it's silly, but this is more of X paradox. We are humans, therefore we apply a human lens to the world and our understanding of it. So the way in which we judge whether something is intelligent is based on, could a human do it? Could I do it? Or conversely, could an object do it? Could an animal do it? But we find that the human lens is actually emphasizing certain tasks as much more difficult than they might actually be, like performing square roots. And our lens is also de-emphasizing other tasks which we find effortless, but which are actually extremely computationally complex, like trying to keep your balance or trying to spot your one friend's face in a crowd of other people. That's why if you think about it, the definition of AGI or artificial general intelligence doesn't really make sense. AGI is the often stated goal for AI researchers to try to develop something that has human level intelligence. But this is an asymmetric goal because human level intelligence
intelligence means can reason and think abstractly like a human can, which is probably not all that difficult, and also can run and keep its balance and spot things the way that a human can, which is exceedingly difficult. Here are some more quotes from that paper. It's not very realistic and useful to aim at AGI that includes the broad scope of human perceptual motor and cognitive abilities, which implies that human level AGI should not be considered the gold standard. And this is the key bit. We should not confuse task difficulty, which is subjective and anthropocentric, with task complexity, which is objective. I guess task complexity is sort of more like computational complexity. In other words, regardless of how you're trying to compute something, there can be a certain complexity associated with it, a certain number of instructions, a certain number of steps that are required to achieve the goal in the worst case. So what does this paper think we should be going after, if not AGI? Put simply, human-machine hybrids. The best possible use of AI would be to use AI to solve tasks that it's really good at and combine it with humans to tackle aspects of the problem that AI is not good at. I can give you an example of this, actually. The thumbnails for my YouTube videos, I generate them using Midjourney, and it often takes 20 or more iterations of me putting in a prompt or clicking on those buttons to generate some base image that I think is good. In this case, I'm acting as the executive portion of this machine-human hybrid. I'm doing the higher level task selection and planning while the machine is generating artwork at millions of times faster than I possibly could. Then I put it into an image editor, the GIMP specifically, so that I can tweak the colors or move things around or combine multiple images together, whatever is necessary to make my human aesthetic think that that image is appealing, which again is something that a human might be better to judge, at least at this time, than an AI model. However, when it comes to background separation, if I want to take one object from an image, I don't try to select it manually, although I would have done so a couple years ago. Instead, I give it to a different AI model in Canva, which is extremely good at doing background separation. Again, probably hundreds of times faster and more accurate than I am at the task. Now, these examples are examples that are using narrow intelligence, right? A model that is trained for one specific purpose and is very good at it. But really, the majority of tasks can be tackled this way. Look at how a human solves the task, then try to automate the parts of that that an AI would be better at, and continue relying on the human for high-level abstract thought, planning, or aesthetics, or whatever else is just too resource intensive to get AIs to do right now. And that's, in theory, how you get economic gains from integrating AI into the workforce. It's worth noting, though, that once we have an AI that can match humans at basically all the skills that humans can perform, that AI will probably far exceed us in terms of reasoning and planning. In other words, once we reach AGI because we check all the checkboxes, it's probably already much smarter than humans. That's assuming AI that's similar to our current AI technologies, of course. We have nature and evolution as a great inspiration for ideas, so there is research, for example, at taking the way that the neural networks are implemented in the brain and trying to do that more faithfully in artificial neural networks. Spiking neural networks, or SNNs, for example, are a closer analog to what our brain is doing. So there's a project, SNN Torch, that lets you experiment with those types of models. And maybe making AI more like biology will mean that we get a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses that biology has. Hard to say. But keep in mind that we are basically running evolution at high speed with intelligent agents exploring the search space. That's us, humans. We're the intelligent agents. But that doesn't mean that what we make will be in our image. In fact, it doesn't make any sense that it would be because we're operating under different constraints. Computers don't have to worry very much about power consumption compared to brains. Computers can network and exchange information perfectly and establish memories correctly on the first try, but they're also limited in terms of sensory input. So there's going to be lots of strengths and weaknesses for machines that are very different from humans. In conclusion, Moravec's paradox, which was the inspiration for this video, talks about how the things that humans find most difficult might actually be very easy for machines and vice versa. The things that humans find very easy could be very difficult for machines. In particular, sensory perception and motor control are very difficult to do in an artificial way, though I'm sure we'll get there. But in humans, we're extremely good at it because evolution has been pushing us in that direction for a billion years. A corollary of this is that AGI doesn't really make sense when you define it as human level intelligence. Or rather, it does make sense, but it's very asymmetric in terms of the axes that you have to achieve, which means that once we have an AI system that can actually clean a house as well as a human can, maybe that AGI system will already be much, much smarter than humans in terms of abstract reasoning and thought. If we don't use humans as the benchmark, though, for what intelligence is and how good our AI systems are, what should we use instead? If you have some thoughts or links, please do leave them in the comments below. I'm quite curious. Finally, if you liked this video, check out this previous one I made 
where I compare humans versus AIs as if I'm explaining it to an AI. So you can take the other perspective for a change and see what it's like. All right, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.